Hi everyone, welcome to the SoFlo Real Estate Show, Ask Athena and Julie Anything, the podcast where we break down the essentials of home ownership for the first time buyer and the seasoned homeowners alike. My name is Athena Chalikas Barokas. I'm a top producer and award winning realtor with Coldwell Banker here in sunny South Florida. I've been selling luxury homes for over 20 years and I absolutely love working with my clients. Today, we're deep diving into the most pressing issue on the minds of many affordability in the current housing market and the five hidden costs associated with home ownership. I'm excited. Today, I'm joined by Julie Dinda of Radius Financial Group, an experienced loan officer with years of experience helping people finance their dream home. Julie, welcome. Thanks, thanks, Athena. I'm so excited to be here and talk about the incredibly important topic of home affordability and those hot top five hidden uh, costs of home ownership. So let's jump right into it. You know what, Julie, post COVID, home prices jumped 25 to 35% across the United States. Today, with home prices still soaring in many areas, the question on everybody's mind is this, can the average person still afford to buy a home? Julie, what are you seeing in the market right now? So affordability is definitely a hot topic. The market has been challenging, especially with the rising interest rates, the low inventory, and of course the high demand. But it's not impossible to buy a home if you're smart about your budget and you understand the full scope of the costs that are involved. It's not just about the sticker price. Julie, that's a great point. Many first-time home buyers focus solely on the purchase price, but there are several other costs that can really add up and add up fast. So let's break down those five top hidden costs associated with owning a home so that way our listeners can have a better idea of what they can fully anticipate. Absolutely. So the first and most obvious one is your down payment. So traditionally, you're looking anywhere from 3% to 20%. So if you're out there looking for a home and you see one for 600000 you got to keep in mind that that could be as much as $120,000 that you're going to be putting down. $120,000. Wow. That is a significant chunk of change, Julie. And if you're trying to put down less than, less than the 20%, I should say, then you're going to have to deal with private mortgage insurance, right? Or what they call PMI in our industry. Exactly. So PMI is an additional monthly cost that actually protects the lender if you default on your loan. It can add hundreds of dollars to your monthly payment. So it's something to keep in mind when you're budgeting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Julie, you know what? Let's do this. Why don't you give us an example of what PMI might look like on, say, a $700,000 home purchase? Okay. So you've got to keep in mind that PMI is is uh, is kind of like your credit score. So it's going to be definitely, uh, it's going to be depending on several factors. So that can be your borrower's credit score. It can be the size of the down payment the loan type, the, even the loan term. So for an example, on a $700,000 home with 10% payment, PMI could cost anywhere between $30 to $70 per $100,000 that you borrow. Okay. All right. So it does start to add up. But the good news is that it's only a temporary cost. And this is something I definitely want to share. Once your home has 20% equity in it, whether it's your monthly payments that you're adding up, whether it's the appreciation in the market, once your home has 20% appreciation or equity in the property, you have the ability to remove that PMI through various different ways. So again, right, Julie, it's not a forever cost on the loan. It's not. And sometimes you actually get a better interest rate if you have PMI on the loan because it's not as high of a risk uh, when you factor in those risk factors again. Um, Very interesting. Yeah. 
Very interesting. So this, so that's, oh, go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead. So I was going to say, so the second big cost is actually your closing costs. So this can be a bit of a surprise for first time home buyers. So those typically range anywhere from three to 5% of the loan amount. And those cover things like your appraisal fees, your title insurance, attorney's fees. So if you're buying that same $600,000 home, you might need to come up with an additional eighteen to 30000 at closing. And these costs are actually due at the time of closing. When you're sitting down signing your documents, these are costs. That, I mean, this is a cost that you actually have to put up in cash out of your pocket. Yeah, correct? that's right. You'll need to have money ready in addition to your down payment. So it's one of those things that can sneak up on you if you're not prepared and you don't obviously do your pre-approval and the whole process. Thanks, Julie. Those are two really, you know, hidden costs that buyers don't think of up front. So let's go on to some of the ongoing costs after you purchase your home. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I have an extra 20000 Why don't Why don't I just throw that in and put 25% down? Um, and then so that'll lower my payments. But the actual fact of the matter is, is that doesn't really lower anything. <laughs> you know, maybe 10 bucks. 20 bucks and to have that in your pocket is very important. So that brings us to the third cost. So property taxes. So these can vary widely depending on where you live, but there are reoccurring costs that you'll need to budget for every year. In some areas, areas, property taxes can be thousands of dollars annually. So it's crucial to factor this into your long-term financial plan. Here in Florida, property taxes are calculated on the, on the new owner's assessed value at the beginning of the year. So the tax on the new home can be quite different than that of the previous owner. You know, Julie, I was working with this one client recently and we had this great example or this great situation that arose. And luckily I was working with you, as you know, and we were were able to you know resolve the issue and actually educate this buyer but here's the example she was looking at a home she put an offer in the person the previous owner had been living there for almost 20 years so the owner had been able to take advantage of the her tax base right with her exemptions her lower tax base my client came in and bought the property at three times the amount that she purchased it for 20 years ago and her new her taxes are going to be assessed at her sale price not the price where the previous owner had purchased it so there was a big difference in that tax table and um you know, we were able to walk her through it with the creative financing of not putting extra money down. She had a little extra money in her pocket to pay the taxes when she was reassessed. It was good. The rule of thumb I share with my clients, and you let me know what your rule of thumb is, Julie, but the rule of thumb I share with my clients is go a little higher. 2% of the sale price here in South Florida. It's just an easy number and it gives you that you know, breathing room of understanding what your tax basis could look like. Your thoughts, Julie, on the rule of thumb? Yeah, absolutely. I think 2% is a great rule of thumb. There's also other ways, like as far as like portability and other things that I think that we've talked about in the past, but stuff like that, it's very important to know. And, in, in, and also knowing your property appraiser, so that you can call them and see if there's any other options that maybe you could do. If you have disability, you have, you pay less, you have lots of different options um, as far as that goes. But a good rule of thumb is 2%. I agree. And aren't property taxes something that can increase over time? Oh, yes, they can. <laughs> as your home value increases or if your lo local government um, actually raises the tax rate, your property taxes could go up. It's another reason to not stretch your budget too thin when you're buying a home. So we covered down payment, closing costs, and property taxes. What's the fourth major cost homeowners need to be aware of, Julie? This is a major cost, especially in South Florida, especially in places where you're you're apt to, to have weather issues or um, flooding. But the fourth cost is homeowner's insurance. So this is non-negotiable if you have a mortgage. Your lender will require it. If you don't pay it, they'll put a forced, forced one on there and then it'll be almost double. So don't ever let that happen. Homeowner's insurance protects your investment against things like fire, theft, 
flood, other damages. In Florida, wind mitigation is required. Another one that's actually required is your flood insurance. So that cost can vary, but it's typically a few thousand dollars per year, depending on the value of of your home, the age and the protection that you already have on your home as far as your insurance goes. Julie, it's important to shop around for insurance, right? Different companies offer different rates and different options. Granted, we don't have a lot of, you know, different types of insurance carriers here in Florida. They come in, they go out. But I think, in my opinion, is that is why it's so important to shop around. And I say shop every year. Honestly, because it it moves, it fluctuates. You know, you might have a really good thing with citizens one year and then another company might come in and, you know, you might as well at least assess it as long as you have the insurance on the property. That's all you you, you really need. Um, but it's a great idea to get multiple quotes and you want to compare apples to apples in terms of coverage. So if someone says, oh, I'll get you, you know, coverage for $3,000 a year, but, you know, they're not covering any of the in, you know, the inside your house or any of your floors or anything that doesn't really make any sense you know so you don't want to go with the cheapest option if it doesn't provide you know protection that you're looking for oh absolutely it's almost best to print it out and then when you're talking to other insurance companies you have it right there in front of you so you do not miss a beat i agree and that makes sense now that we've covered the four major costs, what's our final cost for that often occurs with catches homeowners off guard? Yes, so that fifth major cost is your maintenance and your repairs. So this is the one that really truly does surprise those new homeowners. So unlike renting, where your landlord is responsible for fixing things, when you own a home, those costs fall on you. On average, you should budget about one to 3% of your home's value every year year for maintenance and repairs. We had a, a client um, in central Florida that lived in an area where they had um, not, what is the plumbing called when they have the, um, when they don't have the actual plumbing, it's like, uh, I don't know, the whatever, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like um, sewer, they like they don't have sewer. In? Oh, you're talking about the septic. Septic, yes. I was like, what? I'm okay. doing this, like I'm doing dictionary septic. over here. I'm like, no, no septic. But okay. They, <laughs> yes. So when they bought the house, obviously the septic was fine. They went in, they flushed the toilet once, everything was fine. But then after a while, after the kids came in and flushed the toilet or whatever, that thing got backed up and that was a twenty five hundred dollar uh fee that mm -hmm. needed to be replaced immediately, essentially. So you, you definitely yeah. want to have a little something on the side. Absolutely. And, you know, 3% of a $6,000 home, going back to our example that we've been running through this podcast, that's $18,000 in the bank um, for just in case. So it is important. Budgeting is so important. And boy, oh boy, can it add up, especially on an older home. Oh, yeah. And that's just the routine stuff. Things like HVAC systems, roofing, plumbing. If something major goes wrong, it could cost thousands of dollars to fix. And that's why it's so important to have that emergency fund specifically for home repairs. Yeah. And you know what? That takes me right back to one of your statements earlier on in the podcast, Julie. I don't know if you remember, but it was a golden item that you had mentioned. Don't put all your money into your loan up front just to avoid maybe PMI or whatnot. You know, having a budget understanding the cost of home ownership, understanding how to package your loan. It's so important to work with somebody that actually can walk you through all of the different scenarios so you can make the best decision for yourselves. I love that piece, Julie. That was a great piece of advice. Thanks. But you have also been giving so much <laughs> other great pieces of advice. So to recap, the five hidden costs with buying and owning a home are one, the down payment. Two, the closing costs. Three, property taxes. Four, homeowners insurance. And five, maintenance and repairs. It's a lot to consider, but being aware of these costs can help people make more informed decisions. Exactly. The more you plan and prepare, the better off you'll be. Home ownership can be incredibly rewarding, but it's crucial to go in with your eyes wide open. 
Thanks so much, Julie, for breaking this down for us. It's always been great. It's always insightful. Um, do you have any final tips for our listeners who are thinking about buying a home? So many. But my biggest tip is to make sure you have a realistic budget and stick to it. Don't let the excitement of buying a home push you into a financial situation that's uncomfortable. And remember, there's no shame until waiting until you're truly ready. When we bought our house, we bought a gut job, an absolute gut job. It was $135,000. We, it was literally every single month we just did one thing. Every other month we did one thing, then we did our floors, then we did this. And right now I could sell for five fifty. So you have to just slowly, slowly go and don't put yourself into a situation where you're really regretting buying a house. <laughs> You know what? That is great advice. Thank you again, Julie, for joining us today. And thank you for to our listeners for tuning in to the SoFlo Real Estate Show. Ask Athena and Julie anything. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with someone who might benefit from this information. Until next time, Julie, happy house hunting, everyone. <laughs>